What's up witches? It's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about jumping on the witchcraft bandwagon. Now this topic was inspired by a comment that was left on my cultural appropriation video on YouTube. Now without reading the entire comment, they said that they had been struggling to find meaning and deep ties in their practice and that what they had been doing was just hopping on to what everyone else was doing without ever asking themselves why. So for this episode, what I mean by the witchcraft bandwagon is when people are just jumping on to what everyone else is doing within witchcraft and not thinking about why they're doing it and what sort of cultural ties it might have for other people or for themselves. This topic isn't to say that anyone coming into witchcraft or any new witch or new pagan is jumping on the witchcraft bandwagon. That's not what I mean. What I mean is someone coming into witchcraft or being here for a while and just following along and doing what everyone else was doing. One, maybe because it just works for them. And two, because it's what they see and not necessarily thinking about why they're doing what they're doing or why it works for them. If you haven't seen the video that I did on cultural appropriation or listen to the podcast, I will leave the link in the description and in the show notes so that you can go watch that one or listen to that one next. It is something that I feel is important. It needs to be talked about and it creates a sense of division sometimes within the pagan community. And I think that healthy debate about the topic is important. There are a few different reasons why I think people should not be doing this. The first reason being that your learning becomes stagnant. So if you just go into witchcraft and you see all of this stuff available to you, you see sage and quote unquote smudge kits and chakras and auras and all of this stuff. If you're like me, your first instinct is to learn absolutely everything that you can about absolutely everything. However, there are some people out there who only learn the basics, who only learn what they need to know to get by and to have a superficial understanding of the concept that they learned about. So for example, chakras. I know a little bit about chakras, but chakras have a cultural tie to something that I'm not familiar with and something that doesn't really resonate with me or affect me in the fact that I'm an Irish pagan. Chakras are something completely separate and it's not something that I really not necessarily believe in as a pagan um, or as a witch, but it's just not part of my practice. And I have my own personal reasons for why that is, but when you hop into witchcraft and you see everyone doing all of this stuff and you do it because either you think it's what you're supposed to be doing or you think that it's cool and you don't take the time to learn about what you're doing, your educational flow becomes stagnant. You stop learning. And at this point, you're just sort of participating at a superficial level. Now, leading off of that reason, the next reason that I think witches and pagans should not be doing this is it can lead to a lack of connection. And this can be connection with yourself, connection with your gods and goddesses, and connection with just the energies around you or connections with what it is that you're actually doing. In my opinion, if you don't take the time to learn about what you're doing, you really can't connect with it on that level of deeper understanding that is sometimes required depending on what it is that you're studying. So again, going back to chakras, if I were to come out and say that I am for sure 100% positive that my root chakra is out of balance, I'd, I'd essentially be blowing smoke because while I do know some of the basic information surrounding a root chakra, I don't know enough information to tell you whether or not my root chakra is out of balance and what the symptoms of that are. I have no connection whatsoever to chakras. And if I were to study 
chakras and take part in the practice of chakras, whatever that is, whatever that looks like, I would need to study that on a deeper level than just skimming over the surface of what they are and what they represent to really gain that connection that I'm looking for when it comes to my spiritual practice. This is true for any practice that you partake in as a pagan or as a witch or just as a spiritual person. If you don't have that deeper understanding, it will be almost impossible for you to have that deeper connection with what it is that you're doing. This is why I love tarot so much. I have studied tarot for many years. I mean, I haven't been studying tarot for like decades at this point, I'm only 28, and I still will admit that sometimes I get it wrong, and sometimes I have to go back and reference my learning materials to figure out what a reading means or to refresh my memory of what a specific card means. But having the understanding of what tarot is, where it came from, what the symbols in the cards stand for in what I call by the book tarot, that leads to a deeper connection and that helps me connect with my practice as a tarot reader on a deeper level, not just skimming the surface, not just reading superficially, but connecting with the symbolism in those cards and the history behind the cards in order to bring that forward and bring those messages out that I'm either receiving for myself or passing along to other people who have asked messages of me. The third reason I have for why people should not just be hopping onto the bandwagon of what everyone else is doing is it leads to a lack of self-discovery. When you follow the crowd and do what the crowd is doing for the sake of doing it and not understanding why you're doing it, there is zero chance for you to discover anything else about yourself and about your practice. Looking into why you do what you do can lead you down this whole rabbit hole of shadow work, figuring out what resonates with you, what doesn't. Maybe you research your ancestral history and the culture of your ancestors and the culture of your present day family. Maybe you find practices that are tied to your heritage that you didn't even know about based on your research into what you're doing and why you're doing it. So not looking into these things can lead to stagnation in many parts of your practice. It can leave you open to just flatlining your spirituality. It can leave you open to spiritual bypass, a lack of shadow work. It can leave you open to participating in cultural appropriation and not even knowing it. I've been practicing for a long time. I first got into witchcraft and Wicca when I was about 12 or 13 years old. At this point in this video, in this episode, I'm 28, I'm gonna be 29 this year. I will admit to you that I'm not perfect. I will admit that there were times in my past and there might even be times now that I'm not aware of where I am participating in this witchcraft bandwagon thing where I was doing something just because it's what everyone else was doing. The biggest example of this is the use of white sage and quote unquote smudging areas. When I was first doing this, when I was first building my witchcraft practice and building my paganism. Smudging was prevalent in basically every source that you could read online or in the books or the people that you would talk to in your community. Until I started digging into what smudging was, why people do it, where it came from, I didn't, I had no idea. I was doing it because it's what everyone else was doing and that's what I thought I should be doing too. It might still be happening. There might be some things that I'm doing subconsciously because it's what other people are doing that I haven't realized yet. And this is where that self-discovery comes in. So how can you avoid jumping on this witchcraft bandwagon? One of the first things that I tell anyone who is researching anything that has to do with the occult or paganism or witchcraft, or even outside of this, just in general, in everyday life. Ask yourself why. In raising my daughter, 
anytime she asks the question, why? I, I will not say because I said so, or that's just the way it is, or it's tradition, or because. I've been guilty of doing this before when she asked me questions over and over and over again. She is still growing. I'm still growing as a mother and as a person, but I try not to brush off her questions when she asks me why. And this happens with everything. She can ask me, you know, why, mom, why is the sky blue? And I will explain to her why the sky is blue because of the way light works and it reflects off the ocean. Obviously at this point she's seven. So there are some questions that either I will say, I don't have an age appropriate answer for you, or we can look up age appropriate resources or things like that. And if she asks me a question and I don't know the answer, I say, I don't know, maybe we can figure it out together. I feel like that's a really important part of growing as a person, being able to ask those questions either of other people or of yourself and figuring out what the answer is and growing and learning as a person. That same concept can be applied to growing and learning as a spiritual person in a witchcraft practice. The next thing that I'm going to tell everybody to do is take advantage of the resources that you have at your disposal. Uh, I have all of these videos on my channel. I've got the podcasts. Um, I have articles on my website. I also link to outside sources and other witches and pagans who have been doing this longer than I have, or who maybe can articulate a concept in words better than I can. You have libraries and you have free resources for uh, sacred texts and ancient information and there, there is so much at your disposal that is free for you to use that you need to take advantage of. Just remember that if you are trying to learn about a cultural practice, that you are better off going to people of that culture and asking them for their opinions and their thoughts and listen to them. If they tell you, no, you shouldn't be doing that because this is part of our culture, you have no idea what the context of that practice is, then you need to listen to them. An example of this outside of a specific practice is me, okay? I'm learning Irish. I was doing an Irish lesson this morning and Mango Languages comes up with different cultural notes based on what you're learning. And the cultural note for me came up and said that something like less than 3% of people in Ireland speak Irish as a native language. Um, many more people speak it as a second language, but that Irish is an endangered language and that I was actually helping out by learning how to speak the language. Okay. So my first thought is, oh, that's insane. Like I didn't know that not everyone in Ireland spoke Irish because I knew that Ireland has its own language. It is Irish, but I didn't know that it wasn't like here in the United States where the majority of people speak English. In Ireland, the majority of people also speak English instead of speaking their mother tongue of Irish. And I had no idea. So what I did to verify the information because I'm not gonna take information from an app and say, okay, you know, I know for sure that this is 100% fact. I don't know who made the app. I don't know where they're getting their information from. So I go to this group that I'm part of. Um, it's Irish Spirituality and Paganism, I think it is. If you're interested, I'll leave the link in the description and in the show notes. But I went over there, I took a screenshot of the cultural note from the lesson and I posted and I said, hey, I'm using this app. I'm not 100% sure of the accuracy of this cultural note. Is this true? And the people that are native to Ireland came back to me and said, yes, this is true. Thank you for asking. And, you know, going along this line. So if you're going to learn something that is from a different culture than your own, seek out those resources from those particular cultures. I think that's an extremely important thing for everyone to learn.
how to do. So I wouldn't be going to some like random white person to learn about Haitian voodoo. Even if I was just wanting to learn about it to be more educated on the topic, I would not be going to some random white person to learn about it. I would go to the source. I would go to a primary source, someone that has primary knowledge of the situation, who is from that culture and who can give me a cultural aspect if they want to. And that's another thing. If you go to these cultures and you ask for them to teach you, they don't owe you that. They do not owe you an explanation. They do not owe you teaching or any education at all. So if you go to them and they say, no, I, I don't want to tell you about this, then you need to respect that too. The last thing that I want to mention here is as you go through and you evaluate what it is that you're doing and why you're doing it, don't continue doing something if you realize that it doesn't resonate with you. Don't continue doing it just because it's what everyone else is doing. Like, I feel like this is going back to what we were taught in school on how to avoid peer pressure. Even as adults, it's something that we still struggle with. And I'm here to tell you, it's okay to not follow the crowd as long as what you're doing is respectful and correct. So there's nothing wrong with learning from other people, learning from other witches, but you should always know the reason behind what you're doing. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now. As always, I want to give a big shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you, Jess. Thank you, Rose. And thank you, Renee. If you'd like to help support the work that I do here at Round the Cauldron, please feel free to join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash roundthecauldron, where you can get patron exclusive content for as little as a dollar a month. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't, that's totally cool too and it still helps out my channel. And make sure you stick around to see what's next.